Hi, and welcome. I'm Julianne Cost. To create a gradient, we can tap the G key or we can select the gradient tool from the toolbar. Now, Photoshop ships with several different sets of gradient presets that we can choose from, but for now, I'm going to use the Basics panel in order to select the Foreground to Background option. This is going to use the Foreground and Background color swatches in the toolbar. Then to select a gradient style, I can either select one of the icons in the options bar, or I can use the right bracket key to move to the radial, angle, reflected, and diamond gradient. For now, I'll just use the linear. Then we can drag in the canvas area in order to create our gradient, and we can hold down the shift key to constrain the gradient to 15 degree increments. Photoshop will automatically create a gradient fill layer, which we can see in the Layers panel. We can then use the On Canvas controls to edit the gradient. All of the changes that I make are non-destructive and can be updated at any time. We can drag the endpoints to change the position and the scale of the gradient. We can drag the line in order to reposition the gradient and we can drag the location icon, this diamond, to change the midpoint between stops. We can click either above or below the gradient. The icon displays a little plus icon in order to add a color stop. We can drag the color stop in order to reposition it as well as the location icons. Now to change the color, I can double click on the color stop and that will bring up the color picker. Let's move this a little bit more towards blue and then apply that. Now, if I wanted to delete a color stop, I simply click and drag it away from the gradient. For additional options, we can use the properties panel. Again, I can select from different presets as well as different styles, and I can use the scrubby slider to change the angle of the gradient. If I hold down the shift key, it'll change the angle more quickly. And if I hold down the option key, it'll move it in smaller increments. We can also use the drop down in order to select a preset or just enter in a value. I can do the same for the scale, making it larger or smaller using the scrubby sliders or the drop down slider or by entering in a value. If I reposition this beyond the image area, we can use Command minus to zoom out in order to access and reposition any of the stops. I'll use Command zero on Mac or Control zero on Windows to zoom to fit in window. There are three different methods that I can choose from. Both the perceptual as well as the linear create natural looking gradients that closely approximate the way the human eye perceives light in the natural world. The classic option will retain the look and feel of gradients created in legacy documents in Photoshop. To quickly invert the gradient, I can choose to reverse it and I can use the dither option to prevent banding between similar colors that transition over large distances. Now I'll go ahead and add another color stop, double click in order to change the color and to control how the transition between three or more color stops occurs, we can use the smoothness slider. If I decrease the slider, it becomes a more linear transition. And if I increase it, it'll move from linear to a spline curve. We can also use the gradient controls in order to reposition the color stops as well as the midpoints. And we can simply drag away in order to remove a color stop or click underneath the color bar in order to add a color stop. I'll double click that'll bring up the color picker and I'll shift the color for the middle just a bit. If I select a color stop and want to change the color, I can use the eyedropper, which automatically appears when I click over the gradient options, or we could hold down the option key on the Mac or the alt key on windows and click anywhere in the image area. All right, let's just make that a little bit darker. And then you may need to either drag the properties panel larger or use the scroll bar in order to access the additional options for opacity.
To change the opacity, I can use the scrubby sliders under opacity, or use the pop down slider, or enter in a value. While it may look like the opacity should be changing on this left side, remember I checked reverse. So if I uncheck that, now when I move the opacity slider, it will appear as expected. If I want to add another opacity stop, I can click anywhere here below the opacity controls. And if I wanted to remove a stop, I can either select the circle and click on the trash can, or I can just drag it away from the opacity controls. To set the opacity for the entire gradient, I can remove all but one stop and then just change the opacity for that stop. To quickly create a multicolored gradient, we can change the type of gradient from solid to noise. We can then choose between the RGB, HSB, and lab color models. If I wanted to limit the number of colors that are used, I can use any of these sliders in order to decrease the range of hues or of saturation and even of brightness. To prevent colors from oversaturating, we can always choose to restrict the colors and to add randomized transparency, we can choose to add transparency. To create alternative gradients, we can choose to randomize it. Under the quick actions, we can quickly reset the alignment of the gradient and I'm going to turn off the transparency option to make the gradient a bit more visible. We can also quickly save a preset, give it a name, save it, and it will appear in the gradients panel. We can also use the gradients panel to access additional options such as creating groups, changing the way that gradients are displayed, importing, exporting, and even loading legacy gradients. Next, let's talk about using gradients in a layer mask as there are some limitations. To convert the background into a layer, I'll click on the lock icon and then add a layer mask. I'll right click or control click on Mac on the tool preset icon and reset the gradient tool to its defaults. Then I'll click and drag in order to create a linear gradient in my mask. While the document is open, I can make any adjustments to this gradient. However, if I use File and Save, save the file to the desktop, and then close this document, when I reopen it, we can see that the gradient in the layer mask has been converted to a pixel layer. Also, if I drag out a new gradient, and then choose Image Adjustments and invert that gradient, it will be pixelized and it cannot be recovered using the undo command. The live gradient controls would also be removed if you change the option in the options bar from gradient to classic gradient. Okay, before we wrap up, here are a few additional tips and shortcuts for using the gradient tool. If you have a gradient fill layer selected, you can hold down the shift key in order to draw a new gradient fill layer instead of redrawing on the existing layer. To duplicate a gradient fill layer in the canvas area, you can hold down Option Command on Mac or Alt Control on Windows and then drag on the gradient and we'll get a duplicate layer. If needed, we can create a pixel-based gradient by creating a new blank pixel layer, changing the option to the classic gradient, and then dragging out our gradient. Also, documents with gradient fill layers created in earlier versions of Photoshop will automatically be updated to the new gradient tool, and they will display the re-editable on-screen controls. And finally, when applying legacy gradient presets that contain color stops and opacity settings, the color stops will be rendered, but the opacity settings will need to be reapplied and then saved out as new presets. I'm Julianne Cost. Thanks for watching.